Hello and welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. My name is Sammy and today I am collabing with Adrian over at the Full Time DIY Mommy and we are going to be bringing you some more spring DIYs. And with that said, let's just jump right into them. I don't think you guys are ready for this cuteness right here, okay? Let's get started. So I'm gonna take this sign from, it's actually a Halloween sign, but look at the shape on this thing. Like it is so pretty, I knew I had to use it. So you guys, I am going in with black paint. Now I've done several calendar videos, I'll link them down in the description box, and a lot of subscribers kept suggesting use black. It'll cover up those numbers and the black squares that might show through the paper. Um, I've tried white. I've tried just doing it on like the brown. It does not work. The black works like a charm. So that is why I'm painting the back of this black. Then getting my calendar piece. This is from the Simply Blessed calendar. I am just going and kind of outlining where I want my page to be. That way when I take it off, I know where to place it back down. So I'm just using my jumbo glue stick. You are more than welcome to use Mod Podge or whatever you fancy, but this is what I like to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and just smooth this out here. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn this around. We're gonna go ahead and get our Arteza craft knife. I'm gonna clean this up. Y'all, this came out way better. This is like my starting point. This is like what I envisioned and then that's as far. And then it just kind of came together. Okay, anyways. So smoothing this out, then I'm gonna get a sanding block. I'm just gonna kind of try and smooth out like the rough edges here and that is done with that. So then I'm gonna go ahead and we are going to clean up our workspace with our little ladybug, grab some um, shipping paper. And you guys know I have to cover up the backs. I do it in like every video that I use these signs. I am just cutting a piece out, hot gluing it on the back, and then we are gonna turn it around, clean it up, and now you have a fresh back. Nobody's gonna know that was a Halloween sign and I just have to do that. Okay, now taking some boxwood. This is from Walmart. I buy it whenever I see it because it's super hit or miss. And I am just going to play around with these. I am just hot gluing them directly to my sign, trying to cover up all of that black paint. I will do the right side exactly the same way, making sure that we have an even amount on each side. I just really wanted this looking full and covering all of that black paint. So as you can see, I'm just taking little pieces here and there, hot gluing them to fill them up. And then once we are done with that, I actually was envisioning at first the rabbit wood cut out right here, see? And I was like, no, that looks so weird, the rabbit on the rabbit. So then I grab some um, blah, 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 ribbon. Now this ribbon, you guys, we are gonna cut three pieces, 14 inches long. And I got this at Hobby Lobby. And we are going to glue the ends of two of these pieces together. And I tried to do this a little slower. I do have a bow video though. And we are also going to cut a six inch strip as well. And this is gonna become the middle of our bow. So cut that one. You are also gonna glue the ends together so it's almost gonna look like a little like tunnel cylinder, if that makes sense. So there you go, easy peasy. Then taking our um, little dovetail over here. Well, first I'm gonna fold them in half. I always fold them in half, that way I know where my middle point is and there's no guessing our lopsided bows. I'm gonna cut some dovetails, which I don't do such a great job doing that, so I have to recut them anyways. And um, then we are going to put our bow together. I use zip ties. Uh, it is like the easiest when you use zip ties. So we are gonna scrunch these bows together. Scrunchy, scrunch, scrunchy, scrunch. There you go, hold it. Then get your tail, scrunch it up into the bottom, and then that is your middle. And I'm putting that zip tie through the middle do not zip tie it tight yet. Fluff your bow out, see if your loops are nice and even, if it's how you like it, if you need to pull it, however you need. Once you know that your bow is exactly how you want it to look, then tighten up your zip tie 
and cut the back of it off. And you got yourself a beautiful bow. Look at how good that looks, y'all. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so then we're just gonna hot glue that on. And all that we have left to do is attach our twine to the top of our sign so that we can hang her up. Oh, so cute. And I just poke holes through. I'm going to, um, what you gonna call it? Put some painter's tape, it doesn't matter what tape, at the ends, push that through our hole. I just double knot it on the back here so that it doesn't come through. And we're gonna do the same for the other side and I cannot wait. Look at how beautiful this calendar page came out. All I knew was I wanted this calendar page on a sign and it just ended up coming together so beautifully. I cannot wait to display it somewhere in my home. I hope it inspires you to get those calendars out if you were fortunate enough to All get right, them. that was our first DIY and, and I hope, hope you enjoyed it because there's a lot more in store for you later in this video. Um, I hope you guys are having a fabulous week. I hope you had a fabulous weekend and you guys know if you're digging me, if you're digging the channel, if you're digging the DIYs, then make sure you hit that like button make sure you subscribe and make sure you check out down in the description box to see where else you can find me. And as I mentioned earlier, we are collabing today with Adrienne, the full-time DIY mommy. I'm going to be telling you more about her a little later in this video. I also wanted to let you guys know that I do have a new channel calling Crafting the Healthy Life. And I just wanted to give Danielita AF a big shout out because she is the one that came up with my name. And if you guys are looking for something like healthy motivation, tips and tricks, weight loss, all of that good stuff, it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be so real. And I would love for you guys to join me over there and I will leave that channel down in my description box. All right, let's get on with it. All right, sorry about my voice running over my voice. It happens sometimes. Okay, so taking this ceramic, I don't know what these are called, you guys. Devil Day holders, egg holder, I don't know. But I got it at the thrift store for $2.99, 50% off, so a dollar fifty. Yes. Okay, so taking Linen White by rust I already cleaned this off and everything. We are gonna go ahead and paint this girl up. I am gonna do two coats on the front and only one coat on the back. Now, y'all, if you use whites, uh, cream, or like grays a lot, I highly recommend getting the can of Rust-Oleum. I love the formula. I love that it's a little thinner than Waverly, and uh, it's worth it in the long run money-wise. So this is how it looks after the second coat. I go ahead and flip it around. We're just going to do one coat on the bottom of this just so it looks finished. You never know who's going to look under your tray. I mean, I don't know. Just better safe than sorry, right? Okay, so and I'm just using a synthetic brush by Apple Barrel. After we're done with that and we are going to dry that on up any day now. There we go. And then taking, so this is the planter. This looks very familiar if you guys saw my last uh, fiasco with the planter or the tray stand. But this one is the, the shorter and wider version, okay? So after you're done doing two coats on the planter, I am taking my Arteza um, paint pen and I am trying to do the enamel look. Now, you guys, this is my first time ever doing this. My girlfriend, Lisa, I was asking her like, I don't know what to do with this thing. And she was like, try the enamel look on it. So I was like, you know what? I've never done it before. Let's give it a go. So I don't know how well I did. You guys let me know. So I am just going around and I'm trying to hit where I think the natural like wear on something like this would be. And I am just doing irregular shapes. I am going with my curves and I do this all over. And I, I just kind of like switch them out. I do some horizontally, vertically. I I mean, it's supposed to look like it's chipped away, right? I mean, that that's what I'm thinking it's supposed to look like anyways. And this is how it looks. I don't know if I did too much, if I did too little. I don't know if it looks like a cow. I mean, I don't know. I don't know, you guys. But I had to try it out. And I do like how it looks. So, okay, right here, you guys, I was learning that instead of, like, going so, I guess, precise with it, I'll show you right here. I started doing these, like, really irregular, like, bringing up the chips. See how I'm, like, going up? down, up, down. And I thought that made it look so much more 
natural. So then just like we did with the other tray, I will link that down in the description box for you. I am going to apply my Dollar Tree Super Glue. It is my favorite. It's comparable to E6000 to me. And our hot glue for that immediate hold. And I was so lucky that this already had a hole and every, it was ready to go. And I actually really love the way it turned out. So I hope you guys like it. Let me know what you think of the enamel look. Like I said, it was my first time. Honest feedback is so much appreciated. And look at how cute this is. Now, my whole setup for the, these DIYs were yellow, but I didn't paint my yellow eggs yet. So uh, I definitely want to display this with yellow eggs. Um, so I need to make some more, but all right, you guys, full-time DIY mommy is who I'm collabing with today. Uh, you definitely need to go check her out. I'm going to leave her channel link and the video for today down in the description box. She does so much farmhouse. Her personality is great. You'll love listening to her talk. She's funny. You guys have to check her out. I never disappoint you. So head on over to those links down in my description box. All right, for this one, easy peasy Dollar Tree squeezy. Okay. So this is a plate from Dollar Tree. And uh, I am just going to put two coats of Rust-Oleum Linen White. Like when I put the, the thumbnail that said easy, I meant these are super easy. So we are going to just paint the front. The back is fully night. It's black. It looks good. So I'm not worried about covering the back. And you know, if it was not good on the back, I would cover it up. But we are good. So I am going to do two coats of linen white and rust-oleum and after we are done with two coats i am going to take our antique wax and our plaid uh mini chip brush y'all if you are avid crafters painters you need these in your life i will leave the link for them down in the description box they are so inexpensive and they leave the perfect distressed effect on anything you use them on so Next, we are gonna grab a bunny. This one is from Dollar General. It was $2 and it is much smaller than the Dollar Tree ones, but it is thicker. And then taking these moss sheets, moss uh, sheets from Dollar Tree, I, well, one wouldn't fit on the whole bunny. So we're gonna use two pieces here and I'm gonna cap this one off right at the line of the ears. And at first I was super scared that you would see like the harsh line of them connecting, but it blends into each other so so well I was so happy with the outcome so now I'm gonna take my scissors and we're just gonna cut around it was really easy to cut through definitely pick these sheets up at Dollar Tree if you see them and then after we're done with that I am going to grab some Dollar Tree ribbon I found this ribbon oh no never mind first we're gonna prop this bunny up so the Jenga block wasn't high enough so I grabbed these domino pieces I'm going to use five of them and hot glue them to each other sorry I don't know what my kids are doing above me um and we are going to use this as kind of like a riser because if we didn't we would only be putting hot glue on like the very tips of the ears and the bottom of the body so this is going to make sure that it's attached to the plate so um now we are going to hot glue it, hot glue the bottom of the body. That way it's sitting on that plate rim as well. Now taking our ribbon, I'm going to create a finger bow, just a one loop finger bow. Again, I'll leave the uh, my bow tutorial down in the description box. Absolutely love this ribbon from Dollar Tree. And uh, yeah, so we're going to cut that, clean it up. Then we're going to hot glue it. This is going to be a girl bunny for us. Then taking some Dollar Tree uh, blah, 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 buttons. Okay, how many of you are like me? I will literally start with a button. There we go, that's the one I end up choosing. But I have to go through all of them first. Okay, so then I start with the second one I chose. Hot glue that on and then, okay. So you guys, I just wanted to show you really quickly. So you can stuff flowers behind this bunny. I couldn't figure out a way to hot glue it without it making looking like a hot, making it look like a hot mess. So then I found that like if you just put them more 
towards the bottom of the body that you can stuff them in there and then that way you can actually remove them if you don't want. You could change up the flowers weekly if you're not vibing the yellow anymore. So I am actually gonna show you how it looks both ways if I you know, ever wanna break away from this. <laughs> okay, so here it is with the flowers. Now I like it, I like the vibrancy, but the I felt like the bunny body kind of blended in with the green of the um the leaves so maybe take the leaves off i'm not sure but then i'm also going to show you how it looks without so i like this like i feel like it looks very farmhouse more like modern farmhouse because of its simplicity and i love that you can see all the detail and the distressing she is absolutely beautiful let me know what you think about this bunny girl down in the comments Okay, you guys, this one. So this is a super easy, like cheat DIY. So I was inspired by Danielita AF. I will leave her link down in the description box for the video I was inspired by. But we are gonna take these gold eggs. I'm gonna take Maisie by Waverly and we are just going to paint four of these. Now you guys have seen me do this before, so I'm I'm not going to, you know, waste your time. I'll skip ahead. And we are gonna do double coats on these. I am just using a paintbrush to stick my <laughs> to stick the eggs on because they do have larger holes on the bottom and it works perfectly for me every time. Now, remember guys, if you're gonna take a heat gun to these babies, do not get all up on them. You have seen what happens to my eggs. They make little pregnant egg babies. It's not cute. So, word of advice, if you're gonna use the heat gun on these, just make sure you hold it back pretty darn far, okay? So, so again, I'm using four for this project. I wish I would have painted more so I could have used it for the other display, but it is what it is, what it is. Okay, so let's see if I like edited, edited, edited this well because it doesn't look like it because I'm taking, okay. So now we're gonna do the speckle effect. Y'all, I know, I know you could use a toothbrush. I know that I could put a glove on, but I do not mind getting dirty in the craft room. You could easily wipe your finger, right? So remember, the more product you put on the brush, the more speckle you're going to get. The lighter product on the brush, the less speckle you're going to get. So I do that for all four. And then I'm gonna grab a mason jar from Dollar Tree, and it's actually one of the really big ones that they came out with this past summer, the ball jars. And uh, we are going to put this together. So taking some jute cord, I'm gonna wrap this around the bottom. I believe I do it around four times because it does have the words underneath ball. I think it says mason jars or jar mason or I don't know what it says, but I did not wanna cut off the words. So I made sure that I only went up far enough to get under the first word. So we're just gonna keep on going around this mason jar. Pretty easy peasy gap. I did four strands, so finish that off. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the lid. Now make sure your lid is screwed on when you do this. That way you know where the back of the lid is. So every time you screw, take it off and screw it back on, it will be, your seam will be in the back. You know, you picking up what I'm putting down? Okay, so after that, I grab some Spanish moss. You could use whatever filler you want. Now just make sure with these eggs, since they have those big holes on the bottom, that you just position it where you can't see them. And then I'm also gonna take some reindeer moss, I think that's what it's called, and I'm gonna drop some of that in there too, just to give it like, like a little baby pop of color. And I love the way this turned out. Super, super simple, will look amazing like just on a bookshelf sitting on some vintage books on your table um in a tear tray i mean the simplicity of this is beyond amazing so thank you danielita af for the inspiration i hope you all enjoyed this video today please make sure to go down to the links and check out full-time diy mommy and i hope you guys enjoy the rest of the week i will see you here on thursday for a haul Hank, what did you do? Huh? What did you do?
Oh my actual gosh. It looks weird because it's like it's springy but then like do you wear scarves in the spring I mean I get that it's light but maybe the thickness is that's me trying to uh that's not bad that's not bad that's not bad. Ah, 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 ah. full-time DIY mommy full-time DIY mommy Adrian Adrian that's not a song um, oh, let's change out the lip color okay just add a little color here there you go makes it a little different only you know I know okay why mommy? No. No. Okay. Bing, bing. Check that. Bow, bow, bow. Ooh, look at those broken ones. Me. Right. I know that fool hears me.